Hello, I'm Ben Byram Wigfield, and this is my introduction to using Dorico notation software for anyone who's already familiar with Finale. If you want to import Finale files into Dorico, you will need to export them as music XML. Now, in Dorico's application preferences, there are lots of settings for music XML import, which mostly cover whether Dorico should follow what's in the file or not. Now, you might think that you would want Dorico to import everything. But in fact, I'd recommend checking as few of these boxes as possible. Let's take beaming as an example. Here's a piece in Finale with some notes beamed together. If we tell Dorico not to observe the beaming in the XML file and then import it, you will see that we get breaks at the secondary beams, which weren't present in the original Finale document. This is because Dorico has its own notation options with settings for beam grouping, and this includes whether secondary beams should be split or not for the entire flow. Now, if we close this document, go back to our preferences, and tell Dorico to observe the beaming from the XML file, then we get Finale's beaming, regardless of the options that we've set in notation options. In other words, Dorico has applied a manual override to the imported notes, as if I had manually beamed together those notes myself. Any new notes that I add to the score will follow Dorico's notation options. I can, of course, remove the manual override by resetting the beaming. So, if you've made a piece that you have particular things that you want to include in the file, say, for instance, you've made a piece with dashed ties, perhaps to show editorial additions, then you will want to import those as overrides. But if you haven't, then I would recommend deselecting these boxes so that everything will follow Dorico's settings. Let's look at importing this choral score from Finale into Dorico. So import the XML. OK, and uh, we get this. Obviously, there's some spacing issues there. So let's go to Library, Layout Options. Now, the XML file gives us the page size, the staff space size, and the page margins. Now, one difference between Finale and Dorico is that in Finale, you can have headers and page numbers within the page margin area. Whereas in Dorico, whatever you set as the margins, everything else is on the other side of that. So let's change the margins to give us a bit more room. OK, you can see that's fixed our spacing issues, and the score is pretty well laid out. And let's flip these pedal instructions. When an XML document gets imported, most notation objects will be identified correctly. You'll see, for instance, if I select a dynamic, down here, Dorico tells you what sort of an object it is. But these uh, text dynamics are just text. But that's because that's the way the XML file describes text expressions from Finale. So we could either leave them as text and maybe style them appropriately, or we could change them for actual dynamics. So we can select this region, filter the text, delete it, and then use the Shift-D popover to get 
a crescendo across all the staves. So, in short, there will be some tidying up to do, but you can do lots of this very quickly, either with the layout options or with a few quick adjustments. Okay, there's a few other bits of tidying up to do. We've got a flow heading here, which we don't really need, as there's only one flow. So back to layout options, page setup, flows, and show flow headings, never. And that gets rid of that. Now, in our finale document, you'll see we have these bits of data in the file info. And in Dorico's project info, we don't have anything there under the project, but we do have it for the first flow. We have all that information has come in. Now we're going to copy that to the project by just clicking on that. And now the project has all the same information. Uh, obviously, if you're doing a book or an opera score, then the project and the flows will have different information, but we don't need that now. And so there we've got the correct title, the lyricist and the composer. I hope you have found this video helpful. Please join me in the next video where I discuss the appearance of your music in Dorico, including engraving features and page layout.